you've got that new deal, the opportunity that you've wanted for, for a while, and then suddenly you have that first call, a meeting, and bang, it goes badly wrong. You have the meeting and you don't hear from them again. What's made that happen? My name's James White, and in this video, I'm going to share with you what happens when you make the wrong mistakes on a first meeting call and what you can need to do to, in order to change that in order to ensure that first call or that first meeting goes well. This is a new series in my how to series on how you can get the right results for you in your business or for you in your sales role. I share some examples, some slides and materials with you that gives you all the tips and the ideas you need to go and get great sales results. So let's make sure we give you the tips and the insights to make sure that that first call goes well so you can go on and hopefully win the business. Let's have a look at the video in the next series and the final series of my how to. So as I've mentioned, one of the key things that happens in a lot of sales conversations, and I hear this a lot when I work with business owners and people that are in sales roles, is that they have an opportunity to make a first call or a first meeting with someone, and they get really excited, and then it all goes well, they think, but then they don't hear back from that person afterwards. So what I wanted to do is to use this video to really outline how you should handle that first call, what you should do, and how to make sure you get a better result in order to make sure that you can hopefully win the business in time. So we're going to talk about the importance of that first call, that first engagement, and why it's so important, and how you have to then link this to your sales process. We're then going to talk about what I think are the basics of new prospect engagement when you're meeting someone the first time, and what I call the five critical skills for sales, which I link to emotional sales intelligence, or ESI as I call it. And then we're going to talk about how to approach it in a successful way that gets you the results you want. So look, why are first impressions so critical? So there's a huge science behind first impressions that are absolutely critical. And there's no doubt that it makes a massive difference when we meet someone for the first time. There's a, there's a feeling that, 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 that it takes between 7 and 20 seconds for someone to make an impression of us, whether it's on a call or in a meeting, and to then actually spend the rest of the time, as you can see here, they spend nearly three months of time to make sure that that judgment they've made is confirmed in their mind. And if, if you are different to what they thought, it's going to take quite a while to get over that. And most people's first impressions are built based upon the appearance of what they actually see. And so we've got to make sure in that first moment we get a chance to meet someone or talk to someone, what we make a strong impression that we smile, that our eyes, our hair and our hands and the way in which we operate work really, really well. So the key things we've got to do is understand that this first engagement is critical. And if you don't do it effectively, you can lose the opportunity to win business going forward. But the reason it's also so important is because most salespeople and business people tend to do too much or try to do too much on the first date. I would say to people, if you went on a date with someone and you got a plate that said, will you marry me? How long would you want to stay on that date? You'd probably go, whoa, this is too much too soon and want to back and run, and run away. So it's no different when it comes to sales and selling. You have to be careful about not doing too much too soon on the first date. And I encourage the people that I work with to focus on that first call or that first conversation about just being just that. It's a conversation to get to know someone else and to assess whether they're a good fit for you and whether there could be an opportunity to work together. So be friendly, be engaging, be curious about who they are, but don't do too much too soon. Point number one on first calls is that we generally can't win the business on the first call, but we can sure as hell lose it. So if you're too pushy or you're too focused on what you do or you're too focused on how great you are and basically the other person should bow down at your feet because you're there it's so lucky to meet with you, the chances are you're not going to win that business. And when I talk to business owners and I say to them, what happened in that first meeting? And they tell me, oh, well, the reason it went wrong is because we were in a position where uh, unfortunately, you know it, it, it just really just didn't happen for us because of this and this invariably I will say to them well what was the reason for that what caused that to happen and a lot of the time it tends to be that that meeting that they've talked about who they are and what they do rather than what is right for the other person so it's really, really critical that we generally don't focus on trying to win that business. And I really encourage you to not do that. Sales and prospects is a, is a journey. So there you go. Where my, where my business used to be based in Western, I use this train map. The reality is I'm not going to go on a train, go straight from one place here to London without stopping at another stop. 
I'm going to go from here to Bristol to Chippenham to Dreading to London. You're, the prospects that you go on a journey with you. And so it's really, really important that you think about what the journey could be from their perspective when they're meeting you, especially if you offer a service, then the chances are they're gonna to want to get to know a bit more about you and who you are. They're gonna to wanna to see some content and materials to understand a bit about what you do and before they're gonna then be in a position to want to engage further and hopefully move forward and work with you. So really think about your sales process. What are the steps from top to bottom in the way in which you work? I'll give you an example. Here's mine, how I use things. I'll put a lot of content out there. Videos like this are a great example of content. And then I'll have what I would call scorecards or lead magnets. One of my most popular lead magnets is my 52 questions. I'll put a link into here. And if you then decide to give me your email, we then may have a conversation. We may do a workshop. And we may end up working together. But the point being is it will take time. And you might download some of my information. But if in that first 30-minute call, the way I approach things is incorrect or puts you off you're not going to want to do business with me and it's the same for your clients and the people that you work with you've got to think about that journey of how they will go on that process with you to make sure that the meeting goes well and supporting that sales journey is a great to have lots of content and i'm going to talk a lot and i talk a lot about tofu mofu and bofu content at the top of the funnel that makes a difference that helps educate our audience content in the middle of the funnel that helps them evaluate who we are and what we do and then content at the bottom of the funnel that helps us convert them We've got to make sure we have that right content. So before you start having those first calls and those first conversations, make sure you've got some resources, some materials. If it's at the top of the funnel, make sure you've got some guides or some ebooks or some graphics or some posts or some materials that you can share with your prospect that's helpful. If you've got content in the middle of the funnel, make sure you've got some information on how you achieve the results, what you do. Maybe there's a course, a webinar that you run. And then at the bottom, we're looking for content around customer stories and, and education that can help show that prospect they could work with you. But the key thing is to think about what the journey looks like. Remember that if they're at the start, if that first call is at the top of the process, then they're not gonna go through to buy from you straight away. So the key point we want to focus on is what we want to achieve from that call and the focus on getting to the goal. Within the first call, please don't focus on trying to sell to the person or to get them to buy. Focus on trying to get to the next meeting. Focus on trying to carry the conversation forward. Focus on trying to ensure that you still speak to that person in a couple of weeks' time and that the deal is still going rather than losing that opportunity. But once you've been in the position where you've hopefully got a built a first good impression with them, and we do that through smiling and through engaging and building that initial rapport, there are three factors that are key to get into the next stage. Jordan Belfort in his book, the Wall, uh, in, in Wolf of Wall Street, talked about this a lot. And we, he talks about it as being the three tens. They've got to feel, in order to win business with someone, someone has got to feel trust and happiness with you as a person. They've got to like you. They've got to like and trust your company, and they've got to like and trust your service. So it's really important that we can need to tick all of those boxes for the people that we work with. And in that first call, our goal is probably not to convince someone number three, our service, but to certainly get them so they're comfortable with us and who we are and what we do as a company. But the critical factors that we've got to understand in these initial sessions is that people only buy for two reasons. They buy because they have a problem or they buy because they have a desire. And ultimately, if they don't have one of those two things, it's very difficult to sell something to anyone. So our job in the first instance, if we can, is to try and find out as much as we can about the issues that that person has got or what they want to achieve. And invariably, seven out of 10 people will move from a position of pain to a position of pleasure. I always use the example, if you had 10 people in a room and how many people would want to get their toothache solved versus want to get their teeth whitened, most people might not be that keen to get the teeth whitened. But if they've got toothache, most people are going to want to get that solved. So if we can deal with the problem that the other person's got and get to understand them and focus on them, then it's going to hopefully enable us to carry that conversation forward into a second call, third call, and then onwards from there. The other key thing I really encourage people to think about is this first call is not about us. Where I see so many people muck up the opportunity and lose the opportunity to make a, a second call happen is because they focus in the first call and those first few, you know, half hour or so about them and what they do and how great they are and how amazing they are. They even fall into a trap. So when the other person says, well, tell me a bit more about your company and what you do, they then go headlong into talking. And what we've got to realize is the other person isn't giving us their time because they want to hear how great they are. 
it's because we they feel that there's something we can do for them or there's something that could be helpful for them and so what we've got to do is focus on them and what we can do to support them and give value rather than actually how great we are as i say in the quote there prospects don't care for how great they are they just want to know we can solve their problem so i really encourage you to use your first call or first one or two calls with the ability as stephen covey said to understand someone before being understood it's impossible to be in a position where you can then go and sell something to someone if you don't understand what's driving them to do that, what's causing them to be in that position. So seek first to understand before being understood and use this first call to get to know them, to find out as much information as you can. Use it as a chance to really listen, not to the things that you want to say and to hear something and want to then reply, but to really listen to the way the person's talking, the way that they express things, the gestures they have, the way that they use their tone, really pick up on the cues and the influence and the influence which these people are giving you to be able to know how much of an issue something is. And if someone says to you, yeah, that's a real challenge for us, probe in that area. It's really important that we then use empathetic tone to really say, I'm so sorry to hear you had a challenge there. Tell me more about what's been going on. If you just move over the subject and just ignore it, then people are going to feel that you're not particularly helpful, that you don't really care about them, but you just want to get to your position and talk. Whereas if you can show that you care and that you're empathetic, then they're going to want to try and hopefully share more with you and open up to what some of the challenges are. And it's at that point we then have a better opportunity to hopefully work with them in future. So the key skills that I encourage and believe that every salesperson and business owner needs to have are these five skills that, I, that Daniel Goldman created around emotional intelligence. And I've adjusted, and there's another video which we'll put a link into here around how ESI is critical skills for you to have. And some of the most important skills you can have on that first call are the ability to build that self, those social skills to build a rapport and build a, moment, a momentum in the call. I do that by asking people questions such as how their week's bon been, or I might ask people a question as to I've had a look at their role before and how long they've been in the role or what got them into this industry in the first place. I try and build some rapport. And what I then try and do is ensure that I'm motivated to make sure that I'm passionate and focused on having a great conversation with someone and energetic rather than just being there and not wanting to talk to them in that way. I also want to try and think of using empathy. I want to put myself in their shoes. I want to think, what are they thinking? What are they thinking that could be concerning them? What worries them? What's making them feel not sure? And what makes them feel that this could work well for them? And then I try and use those final two selves, the awareness to see what's going on, to watch the signs as to how the other person's reacting, and then the ability to self-regulate, to shut my mouth when I need to, in order to ensure that I'm doing the right things at the right time. And sometimes that urge to talk is what gets so many salespeople in a difficult situation. And in this first meeting, we want to resist that urge to talk. We want to be self-aware, focus on the other person, and at least be in a position to see if we can move things forward from there. 71% of people will buy because they like, trust, and respect you. And the, the old adage is still the same when it comes to professional services. People still buy from people. So if they like you, they're going to want to work with you. So we've got to use that first call to get through that stage. So focus point number three, focus on the prospect and what's in their world and not about yours. Yes, there'll come a time where they'll ask questions about who you are and what you do, but use this first meeting to understand them, to get to know them, to focus on them. Use some great questions such as, I'd love to really ensure that the, the next half hour is valuable use of your time. What could we cover that would make it useful for you? or really enjoy meeting you today and having a chance to chat with you, what would you like to go through to make sure it's an effective use of your time? Show that you respect them, show that you can understand what they're looking to do, and it's going to help you hopefully move them through to the next stage. But one of the other critical things you've got to do on that first call is do the research on the person you're meeting. In a business-to-business -business environment, you can find information socially on Google or on the company. You can find common information about who they are. And I encourage you to write information down ahead of that meeting so you're prepared. It doesn't mean you have to stalk someone, but it just means that you've been able to look a bit more about who they are so they can see that you've taken an interest and you really want to understand them rather than just see them as another number on your list. Do your research as a first meeting worksheet that I provide. If you would like a copy of that, let me know and we'll put it in the comment section. Put it in the comment section below and we'll give you an access to that. But if you do the right research initially ahead of the meeting, you're going to be prepared. It's going to show the other person that you've focused on them and it's going to help you. And then the other key thing, as I mentioned, in the 52 questions guide is a resource to do this. 
get comfortable asking great questions. Questions such as, where did you hear about us? How can we help you? Tell me more about the company and the work you do. I see you've been in the role for so long. What were you doing before you came to this role? Insights and questions that we can use that will really, really help that person share information on what's going on in their world. And we can help them by understanding them rather than focusing on what we do. The best salespeople ask great questions. They focus on the when, the what, tell me more, the how, and they understand what's going on in the other person. They probe to make sure that they, when someone's mentions a difficult issue, that they find out what's going on. They're like a dog with a bone. They want to find out what's going on, but in an empathetic way. And it's at those points and the prospects will give you insights and information that in time, when you then come to share your proposal with them, you can actually then say, you talked about this, this, and this, and, the, and how stressful this was or how key this was a couple of weeks ago. We're keen to resolve that for you. You don't get to be able to offer a solution and get people to value what you do if you've not dug further into their challenges and really know what's going on for them. So I really encourage you to dig further. But of course, in this first call, we want to make sure that we're not spending time talking to people that aren't going to be right for us. So one of the other critical things I encourage you to do is to create what I would call a sales criteria checklist. That criteria can be a simple way in which you can identify your perfect customers, the people that you work with really well. And what you can then do is try and through the questions that you ask, ask some questions to see if that person's a good fit. Sometimes in those first calls, it's just not a fit. We may be talking to someone that expects always looking for this and we deliver the alternative something different. And therefore, there's no point carrying on a conversation if they're not right for us. Sometimes when I've had conversations with people about sales training and I know that they don't value certain things, I'm able to say, look, I'm probably not going to be right for you because that's not a criteria of something that's really key for you. So being able to qualify your own prospects or your own criteria is key. And I'm not saying you want to show this to them, but create that list, create a pad of paper and share that list so that you can identify whether they meet some of the criteria set to know whether it's then worth you carrying on that call. Because if we don't determine if there's a fit, we're going to potentially chase and put time and effort into calls and activity that are never going to get anywhere. I always use the example of the Range Rover and the Hyundai, both great brands, but you wouldn't, you know, the, the value of a Range Rover compared to a Hyundai is very different. So we have to assess whether there's a fit for the service that we offer rather than expecting just to carry on talking to someone and know that there's, they're never going to buy your service because they can't afford that amount or you're a premium service and they're looking for a value service. The key thing is to determine in those questions if there's a potential fit and if there is, we can then carry the conversation. And then that leads me on to the final element around this, these first calls. We want to be clear about that next step. What is it that we want to do? If people have enjoyed having a conversation with us and they feel that we've listened to them, we feel that we've really understood their challenge, here's a simple way in which you can then move them forward. Summarise where they've got to. Summarise their situation. I think from what you've told me today, uh, John, I've heard X, Y, and Z. Have I, have I heard that correctly? Yes. Great. What would you like to do next? How would you like to move forward? Be clear about that next step, but put them in control of it. Suggest a date and time for you to meet. How about we carry the conversation on in a couple of weeks' time or in a week's time where I can share some other ideas on how you can solve that problem? How would that feel for you? How does next Thursday at 4 p.m. work for you? Be clear about the next step. Don't leave it unopened. If you have a call with someone and you then leave that call not knowing what's going to happen next, don't be surprised when you don't hear from them where you find it difficult to get in contact. So look, these are the critical things that we really encourage you to focus on when you're making that first call, that first meeting. There's lots of resources I share on my Facebook page. Search for the sales experts. We'll put a link in here on the Facebook page. But also reach out to us on social media, obviously the YouTube channel where you're watching this, but on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, we're here to help you make the most of the sales conversations that you have and to get better results. But the key thing is this, if you approach this first call in the right way, if you do the things I'm suggesting, then I guarantee you're going to stand a better chance of winning business. And even though you can't win it on the first time, you're going to move that prospect forward into the second and third calls which is hopefully going to increase your chance of success and then working with you and your company so i hope that's been useful give you some insights into how to approach the first call if it has let me know in the comment section below which bits you've used and which work for you 
and what are the things that make of diff made of difference in your conversations that you've used to help move someone through that process and if it hasn't hey let me know as well if this isn't the type of content that's valuable for you let me know what would be and i'll make sure i prepare that and we do another how to series really soon but thanks for watching if you have liked the video please like and subscribe to the channel let's ensure we get loads of other people who are unsure on how to sell and get sales results getting the results they want i look forward to sharing another video with you next saturday take care and have a great week